Hi, I'm Ryan Osbeck with Copeland Canada, representing filter compressors. Today, we're going to talk about compressor inspections. Regular maintenance of your filter screw compressor is going to consist of a regular annual inspection of the machine. We recommend that the bearings get checked, because it's going to be axial and radial end play on your main rotors, as well as each of your gate rotors will also need to be checked. These gate rotors will be inspected the bearing play, as well as gate rotor wear, bushing wear, and shelf clearances. Tools that we are going to need are going to consist of shims, magnetic base and dial indicator, pry bar, some wood blocking to protect the surfaces of the components, and other, other tools like Inspection mirrors can also be handy for the, for the visual inspection. First, we're going to start with checking the main rotor. We're going to check the axial clearances as well as the radial clearances of the thrust and main bearings. To do this, we're going to set up a dial indicator on the end of the compressor. We're going to lock into the end of the rotor. I want to make sure that everything it's tight and solid so that we're pushing, we're actually pulling on the rotor and not just pulling the nuts and the backing here. This is typically going to be performed against a coupling nut, but being a training compressor, we do have this. So once we get our dial set up, we want to make sure we zero it as best we can. Zeroing is ideal because it just makes the math easier. We're just on this block. Sometimes you can push against the bolt. Going to get in behind it. We're just going to apply some pressure. We're not requiring a significant amount of pressure. You got to remember, force. We're looking for about 250 pounds of force. So when I'm pushing all the way at this end, my fulcrum's right near the shaft. I don't need 250 pounds on my on my pry bar to get that movement. Now this training compressor may vary. Is actually in good shape. Pushing my table around more than I'm pushing in my thrust. This clearance on this machine is negligible. That's good. Our next measurement we're going to check is going to be the radial. I like to set the dial up right near the top. Try to get it closer to the machine to make it easier. Again, we're going to check that zero measurement. Try to dial in as much as possible. We're going to press again and again. Remember, we don't need a lot of force to move this, if at all. With the main bearing being roller bearing on the front, we're going to find that we will get some movement out of it. We're looking for minimal movements. Around three to five thousandths is acceptable. A little less, that's okay as well. And I'm getting some movement. It's all acceptable. Now, these measurements, you're going to want to make sure that you document and write down so you can fill out a proper report for good preventative maintenance tracking. Next, we're going to move on to the gate rotors. Next up, we're going to remove that gate rotor cover. Something that's important to keep in mind is when your machine's in the field, there is going to be some oil trapped in behind here. So as you pull these bolts out and lift this face away, be very, be very aware and prepared to have oil draining from here. Now, before starting an inspection, of course, you should have done a proper shutdown and isolation of your equipment because you can't do it while it's running. And you definitely can't be opening up a machine while it's still under pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these covered bolts now. I always like to leave these four bolts in just to help use these so I can control the flow of oil that leaves this compressor cover as we need it. So it doesn't just gush out all over the place. It helps to give it a little bit of control. Back these out a little bit at a time, slowly work it out. If it ever gets to be too much, you can push the bolts back in. I don't have oil in this machine, so I'm just gonna pop these bolts right out. So we've now opened up and exposed the gate rotors. From here, we're going to take a good visual look and visual inspection and check. One of the first things we're going to be looking for is make sure we got a good seal, a ridge 
on the leading on the outer edge, as well as checking our leading edges for between rotor. We push these back and just kind of check and examine all everything. We also want to make sure that we don't have any significant chipping, wearing. We're not exposed, worn down and exposing anywhere on the shelf or support. Just making sure everything is otherwise in good condition and everything is wearing normally together. And everything so far on this one looks okay. I'm gonna to try to examine as much as we can. That's where some of the bigger machines, it's always a little easier to see visually. On the inspection mirror, you can get down inside and see a little more yet. But at first glance is here, this gay rotor looks to be all right. So we'll continue on with our inspection. First item I like to inspect is our bushing clearance. That is the movement, but that is the clearance between the gate rotor support and the gate rotor itself. You can go back and forth, see how much movement there is. In order to do that, we need again set up our dial indicator. So we're pop the dial indicator on. And I like putting it on the support best as possible. Ideally, we want it nice near this outer edge and straight, so we got to make sure that nothing obstructs it. Just tighten that up. We're going to find that zero movement. So I like you got to push these all the way to one side, and then we'll find our zero. Now, it's important that we try not to move the gate rotor as much as possible and just the support, push it the other way. We're gonna take and we're gonna look at that measurement. You're gonna to have to do this a couple of times just because of the amount that these gate rotors do move with it. So you wanna do it a couple of times. Make sure you get some consistent numbers coming up. And we're looking pretty consistently anywhere between Say we're about 32 thousandths, 30 to 32 thousandths of play. Next one that we can do with this dial indicator immediately is backlash. Backlash is going to be the distance between the, the main rotor lobes and the gate rotor finger. This one is a little trickier to get because of the position that the gate rotor needs to be in. There's 11 gates or 11 fingers on the rotor. So in order to make sure that we're in the right spot, the one inside needs to be perpendicular with the axis of the main rotor. So we can kind of visually see that we're going right between the middle of these two fingers, which means that inside we should be pretty, cl pretty close to where we need to be. Next part is we got to keep and hold the main rotor from turning. So we're going to go all the way to one direction and zero our dial. And then we're going to go back the other way and get, record our movement. So I have approximately nine thousands of play and movement on this machine consistently. So again, you're going to record that measurement down and have it for the next and move on to the next one. One of the next things that we can do with this machine is actually check the main bearing, or the, sorry, the thrust bearings for the gate rotors. So to do that, you're gonna set up your dial gauge on the bottom against your support. And I find it's easiest just to put bolt back in. We're gonna get a pry wood bar. If you're going to lift against the gate, definitely want to make sure you have something to protect it. Uh, 
so you don't damage anything with the pry bar. So we're going to zero our gauge, and again, we're just going to pull down, keeping in mind, again, that we don't need a lot of force to make these things move. So I'm seeing about thousands of play for the maximum of two. So we're still well within our tolerance limits, and that is still very acceptable. For the gate rotor shelf clearance, what we're actually measuring is down inside here is the shelf of the discharge compression that runs all along the backside where the gate rotor sits. So what we're measuring is the distance between the surface of the gate rotor and the top plate of the shelf. We start with a shim. It should be about three to four thousandths of an inch. So we're going to get a shim in there. I'm starting with a three thousand shim. We're just going to slowly roll this compressor into place with the shim just inside. Now we don't want to we don't want to let this go in because we'll kink our shim up if we go inside. But we need to get just underneath there, and so that it's tight and snug, not so tight that we can't pull it out and pull it back. If it goes in nice and easy without anything, then it's definitely not it. If I was trying to put, if I was to try to put a 2,000th shim in here, it would slide in just easily enough. The 3,000th goes quite nicely in and out. To verify, of course, of course you're going to verify, we'll go up, move up to the next shim. This one is a 4,000th shim. This one is a 4,000th shim. We're going to put it in the same position, do the same measurement. Now it goes, but it's a lot tighter to remove, but it still comes out easily. So we're sitting at what appears to be 4,000th, quite okay. So again, let's verify and go to five. Five in there. Oh, there's a lot of resistance. I'm actually squeezing that one. So we're between four to five thousandths. So now we've done one side of the compressor. Next, you just need to again do it again on the other side of the machine, and then your compressor inspection is complete. Make sure you record your data and keep everything in good filed order. So with your customer or with your own service department, just so you could track things in the future go back and forth and make sure that things are, you maybe help trend and identify problems before they happen. That's the whole point of a good preventive maintenance pro program is to make sure that everything is in good working order and you can track it so you can see when things start to fail and come apart so that you can get ahead of a failure and maintain your equipment properly. Crash maintenance is maintenance, but it's, it is definitely the most expensive maintenance. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I'm Ryan Osbach, Copeland, Canada, representing Vilter Compressors. Thank you.